Hey, welcome back to the Hughes Performance YouTube channel. My name is Pete Nichols. I'll be your host today. Uh, we appreciate you tuning in. If uh, you've been following us along and you're enjoying the content, we hope that you've uh, hit that subscribe button. If you're new to the channel, you'd definitely be doing us a big favor to do that and uh, give us a like and a follow on social media. Uh, this is part six of our ongoing series for 2020 on the GM Powerglide transmission. Uh, we've got five other episodes prior to this up live on YouTube, so be sure to go back and check those out. Today we're going to be talking about front pumps in the Power Glide, and we have quite a bit of ground to cover. So, starting over here to the left, we have a good example of just an original cast iron Power Glide front pump core, not to be confused with the cast iron Power Glide transmission the aluminum case power glide transmissions that we're covering in this series uh, began production in 62 carried onward they were all equipped with cast iron front pumps and the front pump didn't change a whole lot throughout the years of production there's some subtle differences in uh, converter feed orifice diameter on the factory pump stators um, but all in all the power glide front pump stayed pretty consistent throughout the years of production and Believe it or not, this nasty, dirty, rusty old core is actually a fantastic front pump to use in a power glide drag racing transmission or high horsepower transmission. It may look ugly. They go through a restoration process here at Hughes Performance. We'll take the pump stator half and we'll resurface this area on our pump grinding machine to make sure it's true and flat. We'll take the OEM pump body and we'll lap this surface here to ensure that it's true and flat. We don't use OEM Power Glide pump gears. We use aftermarket forged steel gears, which we source from Sonics. The OEM gears uh, can be prone to breakage here at the drive tangs inside the inner gear uh, in a high performance application. Obviously, we don't want that happening to our customers. Hence the aftermarket forged steel gear, it's significantly more durable. Once we've lapped the pump body to ensure that it's true and flat, we'll go ahead and set pump gear clearance. We'll verify that clearance is correct between the inner gear and the pump crescent here. We'll also verify clearance on the outside diameter on the outer gear, and then we'll set the gear height. So if the gear is a little on the tall side, after we've lapped the pump body, we'll go ahead and machine the pump gear to establish correct clearance so that this gear isn't chewing into the OEM cast iron pump stator surface. Uh, when we go through pumps, we use a Durabond dry film front pump bushing, which presses into the pump body. In this area, we use a standard GM style metal clad lip seal, pretty standard stuff. On the back side of the pump stator, like you can see on this one, You've got sealing rings here. We use Teflon sealing rings in that area, OEM or cast iron. The cast iron rings can actually cause accelerated wear inside of the direct drum where they ride and seal the hydraulic passage. So the Teflon's a lot more forgiving. And in our opinion, it actually seals even better than the cast iron rings do as well. So that's a win-win. And that's kind of all that's really going on in an OEM Power Glide front pump. They're very, very simple. Uh, there's no moving valves. There's no pressure regulator system in the pump. Um, that's all housed inside of the Power Glide valve body. We're going to get to that in another episode later in the series. Uh, but yeah, really, really simple deal. A um, little deeper tech on the OEM pumps. The OEM stator tubes, they're pressed in. They have a spline and they press into the cast iron stator body here. This is an aftermarket version. You can see the splines around here where it press fits. And some builders prefer to always press this OEM tube out and press a new aftermarket heavy duty tube in. Um, the reason for that is the OEM pump stator tube could potentially break or even spin out inside the splined area in a really high horsepower application. Uh, that being said, we've been building power glides for well over three decades, and the OEM stator tube is actually surprisingly good. That's not typically very problematic in our experience. Um, 
We run the OEM stator tube in applications up to 1500 flywheel horsepower and almost never have a problem. That being said, it's not a perfect solution. You'll still get one occasionally that'll spin a stator tube out uh, and that's gonna cause a problem. It's gonna alter converter function. It doesn't usually break the transmission, um, but you'll know it when it happens because the converter is gonna behave a whole lot differently when it does. So, one solution, Sonics makes this. It's a aftermarket forged steel tube, it's heat treated. Uh, it is quite a bit stronger metal than the GM tube is. And Sonics increases the size of the spline slightly to give it even more press fit into the OEM pump stator body. We do offer this as an option in what we call our HD pump, our heavy duty pump, and that's still based on the GM cast iron piece. Still gets the good Sonics forged pump gears and the Durabond bushing. Um, we literally just replace the stator tube and that's what makes it HD, so to speak. So if you prefer the style of stator tube in your Power Glide build when you're buying one from us, just let us know, we'll be happy to put this in. So there's also the option to convert an OEM pump to use a ringless input shaft. All of these pumps and this tube here are all set up for a ring style input shaft. If you're not sure what I'm talking about there, go back in our uh, YouTube series. We have a whole episode dedicated just to the different styles of input shafts. Um, so if you want to convert an OEM pump to use a ringless input shaft, Sonics does have a stator tube kit for that as well. Uh, we don't get into those conversions anymore because we've solved that whole issue with a, a far superior solution, which we're going to cover here in a minute. Um, but it is worth mentioning because that is an option. And there are a lot of builders that do opt to offer their ringless option based on an OEM casting with the Sonics tube. And honestly, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, it is still a splined fit, so there is still that potential to spin a tube out. However, uh, that rarely happens with these aftermarket tubes, so not a huge area of concern. Um, side note on the pump stator since we're talking so much about those for the do-it-yourself builders out there or somebody that wants to get into building their own power glide if you're needing to add a torque converter feed restrictor for any reason whether it's to help manage uh, forward thrust pressure generated in the converter uh, from the converter feed circuit and the trans brake application uh, if you have an engine with a weak thrust bearing sometimes that can help or you're trying to manipulate the charge oil going to the converter Maybe you have a small displacement engine with a really big turbo and you want to try and improve staging characteristics and get the turbo to light faster. You can play with converter feed restrictors to help with that to a degree. Um, it's right here that you're going to install that in the OEM pump stator. We have that arrow and the circuit highlighted there in green paint pin. And you literally just take this passage, uh, drill it to 730 seconds, Tap it for a 5 16 18 thread, wind a set screw in there, drill the middle of the set screw out for whatever size restriction you're going for, and you have a converter feed restrictor. You just want to make sure if you're going to do that, that you bury the restrictor far enough into the passage that it's not sticking out and causing the interference when you go to reassemble the pump body to the pump stator. So it's a little uh, tip and trick, so to speak, for the do-it-yourselfers. Uh, moving forward from the OEM stuff, uh, OEM Power Glide pump cores are getting a little more scarce these days. Uh, the pump stator isn't so much of a problem because we can machine this area to restore it if there's any damage from pump gear or converter failure. However, the pump body, uh, if you get into the damage in the pump pocket area, depending on how much damage there is, sometimes you end up with a scrap pump body that can't be reused. Uh, we do machine ones that are worn excessively for an oversized pump gear. We have that option here in our CNC machining center. So we are able to salvage a lot of worn OEM pump bodies. But if there's been an absolute catastrophic failure where, say, a pump gear is shattered um, and it's put deep gouges or, or uh, deep grooves or anything like that into this pump pocket to where the oversized gear isn't going to help it clean up, uh, that pump body is scrap. Um, so we came up with our own solution and this looks a lot like an OEM Power Glide cast iron front pump body. It is based on that, but this is our own 
heavy duty cast aluminum version. Uh, it's hard anodized, so it's very heavy duty. It doesn't wear like untreated aluminum does. Uh, it's a very good US grade of aluminum. It's made right here in Phoenix, Arizona at our facility. So this is a really a nice premium direct replacement for an OEM pump body. OEM style gears, so the Sonics forged gears fit right in. Bushing, lip seal, the whole shooting match. You can fit this to an OEM pump stator. It's a direct replacement. Very, very nice piece. Um, fully machined, ready to drop your gears in, your bushing and your seal and go if you want to buy these. We also offer it as a complete assembled pump option with an OEM pump stator in our pump body. Uh, and that's a nice way to cut some weight out of the vehicle too, right in center mass. So that's never a bad thing. Another solution is an aftermarket cast iron pump based on the OEM designs. And there's a few companies producing these. We do not, however, uh, we do offer the brand new cast iron front pump option. We source this from JW Performance out of Florida. Uh, the reason we like the JW pump is it's 100% made in the USA, premium materials, really nice machine work. Uh, it's just a great piece all the way around. So if you're in the market for just a whole brand new cast iron power glide pump, it's already got the good gears in it, it's already got the good stator tube in it um, that you can just drop in and go on your power glide build. We do have these uh, ability to provide you with the JW pump. You can, of course, order that right from JW as well. So uh, shout out to those guys for producing a really nice product and solution for guys wanting a whole new cast iron pump. Moving into the really cool stuff is our own CNC machined billet aluminum front pump assemblies. And this pump solves several problems. The uh, foremost would be the whole stator tube issue with spinning a stator tube out of an OEM pump stator. Our billet aluminum pump uses a bolt-in stator tube. So this is the stator tube assembly. It's machined out of a chunk of billet steel and it's nitride treated, very, very tough. And you can see here on the entire assembled pump, it attaches to the pump with five bolts. So this is a end all be all bulletproof solution to stator tube failures in power glide pumps. And here's what's really cool. You can take our billet steel pump stator tube, you can take our billet aluminum uh, pump stator backing plate, and you can actually use an OEM cast iron power glide pump body or our cast aluminum pump body with this stuff. We designed it that way on purpose. Everything you see here is modular in design to make it user friendly and to make parts interchange. So if you prefer a cast iron pump body instead of a billet aluminum body for whatever reason you may have, uh, we'll sell you our pump stator components that you can simply install onto your cast iron pump body. No machining, no goofy fitment issues. It literally just bolts together like a normal power glide pump. Uh, something else that's, else that's really cool about our billet pumps, because this is a, a two-piece bolt-together assembly, the back side of the pump stator backing plate here is all machined for O-rings to provide sealing between the backing plate and the stator flange assembly. And we include the O-rings when you buy this as separate components if you're building your own pump. Of course, if you buy an assembled pump, it's already going to have that in there. The O-ring feature is really nice because it provides an absolutely positive fluid seal so that you don't have any potential for any internal leaks or issues between these two halves when they're mated together. The billet aluminum pump body uh, is based on OE style pump circuitry. It is different in the respect that it uses a slightly larger diameter pump gear that's also a little bit thicker. This is actually the same pump gear set that you can find in the Turbo 350 and the larger gears offer a little bit more volume capability. Um, they're really good about producing consistent pressure. Uh, that being said, there's honestly not necessarily a clear cut advantage between OEM dimension gears and the higher volume 350 gears. 
Uh, we just figured if we're going to design it, let's go as clean sheet as we can and improve it where we can uh, if possible. So that's the story with that. Uh, again, this pump body uses a OE replacement style bushing. We like the Durabon stuff with dry film coating. Uses a GM, just standard power glide, conventional metal clad lip seal. Here's another improvement we made. Inside here in this pump body, we have a snap ring groove and we have a spiral wound uh, hot rolled steel snap ring that actually acts as a seal retainer. So the seal still presses in just like normal with a cast iron body, but then with the snap ring retainer, it eliminates the possibility of ever having a front pump seal push out on you. Generally speaking, that's not actually that big of a problem, even with the cast iron pumps that have no seal retainer. But we have seen it happen, so we figure, you know what, we're just going to incorporate that feature in the premium billet piece and make this thing as absolutely bulletproof as possible. Uh, sometimes you'll see it happen in a turbo car where if you're stuck staging for a long time, time trying to build boost, or somebody's trying to burn you down at the starting line and you're stuck on the converter for a while, it is possible to get the converter and the front pump hot enough to actually push this seal out. When that happens, you're going to lose a large amount of transmission fluid. Uh, that can potentially flash fire. That's obviously a bad day for everyone. So the snap ring in our billet pump prevents that from ever happening. Uh, we offer the billet pump options for use with a ring style input shaft or a ringless shaft. The pump body and the pump stator backing plate are both identical regardless of which style shaft you run. The pump stator tube that bolts in is different. Uh, this is a ringless model. It has the bushings back here for a ringless input shaft. Uh, the ring style won't have any bushings here. The sealing rings on the shaft will actually seal inside the bore, so the bushings are unnecessary. The bushings are what creates the fluid seal on the ringless shaft for proper hydraulic circuitry to feed cooler oil to your gear train in the power glide. We'll get more into that too when we get into planetary gear sets in another episode. So that kind of covers our power glide pump offerings. Um, there are other design pumps out there from other manufacturers. There's a lot of good stuff out there. Um, this is just what we prefer and what we offer. By no means is this the limit. Uh, as far as small parts go, this pump uses OE style sta uh, stator sealing rings here. So our PTFE rings fit anybody's PTFE rings fit. Uh, you could theoretically put a cast iron sealing ring in there, but I don't know why you do that. It just ends up causing premature drum wear, but if you insist on iron rings, it'll fit our pump no problem. Uh, we have shim packs available in different thicknesses. Uh, when you buy one of our complete pumps, you get a three pack of shims. Uh, we also have these av uh, available separately these are used to help control end play in the rotating assembly of the power glide transmission and these install between the pump and the direct drum and you can see that here we've got a direct drum set up and we have a roller bearing and you'll typically install that end play shim over your pump stator then your bearing and it then you've got your sealing rings and it drops down into the direct drum. So you can set your end play accordingly based on that shim thickness. It's a very easy thing to do. Worth noting is that OEM power glides are not equipped with a roller bearing in this area between the drum and the pump. They're equipped with a thrust washer. We don't use thrust washers in any power glide we build. Uh, we actually machine the cast iron pump stator here to add the roller bearing and the reason we machine it is the bearing we use is physically thicker than the OEM power glide thrust washer so in order to actually have end play in the transmission when we add this roller bearing we have to shorten this surface here to compensate for that thicker bearing. We'll machine a little extra off so that we can fine tune the end play again using our shims to set that. So if you get a pump from us, um, or you get a whole transmission from us, it's always going to have a roller thrust bearing in it, and it's always going to be this style of bearing where you kind of see it has the uh, hat style race on it. This bearing always requires machining here. 
unless you're dealing with an aftermarket pump that's already designed to accept that like our billet pump this is already manufactured to the correct dimension for this hat style thrust bearing so no machining necessary if you buy one of these pumps and want to jump it drop it into your power glide that being said sonics has a really cool thrust bearing solution for the do-it-yourselfers who don't have the ability to easily machine the pump stator for a thicker bearing sonics has this roller thrust bearing that is actually the same exact thickness as an oem power glide thrust washer and what's kind of neat is it didn't actually have to be custom made it's actually sourced from a ford 5r55 transmission ironically it's the same inside diameter and it's the just right thickness to where it goes right on a power glide pump stator and gives you that roller bearing option with no machining to the pump stator so if you're doing a build yourself and you want to get a hold of one of these bearings so you don't have to do any machine work uh, it's sonics part number five six two four one we can sell you that bearing or you can get it anywhere that stocks sonics components so another cool inside tip last thing on roller thrust bearings some builders will take and machine a pocket into the face of the drum here instead of machining the pump stator and they'll have the bearing seat down into that pocket um, a lot of builders do that we don't we don't like it because it reduces the actual uh, depth or height if you want to say of this bore where your ceiling rings seal on the pump stator and we've seen instances where too much is taken off here and can actually get into the ceiling ring area and compromise the ceiling rings ability to provide a good hydraulic seal or if somebody isn't paying attention and gets the end play set too loose on the rotating assembly during the build uh, as this drum moves back and forth inside the transmission because it has too much end play uh, it can actually uncover that first ceiling ring and then you get a big internal leak uh, you blow off clutch oil you burn up the direct clutches and you're having to rebuild your transmission so we prefer to maintain the OEM dimension on the drum to have maximum available area for the ceiling rings to ride relative to that fore and aft end play mm -hmm. and machine the pump stator instead to accept that bearing it's just a safer way to build the transmission uh, for some it's a little more work and it's easier to just machine the pocket here and that's why you see that so that doesn't mean that builders who do that don't know what they're doing uh, there's some big name companies that do that um, and as long as you're paying really close attention to setting your end play correctly and you're not taking too much material out of the drum here honestly it is a viable solution um, we just prefer to play it safe and go the other route by machining the pump stator so that pretty much covers it um, last thing power glide use a paper pump gasket to seal between the pump and the case that gasket's going to install on the back of the pump here uh, when you buy one of these pump kits from us you get a new gasket we have these available separately we also have these in different thicknesses to help adjust your end play if needed so another cool item that we have and then on the outside here you can probably see it better here you have that square cut groove we have a square cut o-ring that goes in here and again that's an oem feature all of our pumps use an oem style gasket and an oem square cut uh, o-ring so it's all easily replaceable stuff doesn't take anything special that's how you seal the pump to the case and that just about covers it so a uh, quick diagnostic tech tip on pumps if you're pushing fluid out of your case vent uh, a lot of times that can be traced back to either warpage between the pump stator and the pump body and it's actually sucking air through that warpage into the pump gear set and foaming the oil pushing it right out your vent or you can have a compromised gasket if you pinch a gasket or scrub a gasket or cut a gasket during assembly uh, in one of these hydraulic circuit areas you can suck air there too and if you pull air on the pump side on the suction side uh, again it's going to aerate the fluid it's going to cavitate the pump and the converter and it's going to cause that push it, uh, fluid to push out the vent in extreme cases 
and you can even start pumping oil up out your dipstick tube. So if you ever run into that, front pump area is the first place you want to look and give everything a real solid once over. So we hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions, definitely hit us up in the comments below. Uh, we're online. We love interacting with you guys. We love your questions and your comments. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, we're on social media, Instagram and Facebook. So check us out there for fresh daily content. HughesPerformance.com. Uh, you can hit us up on the phone, 1-800-274-RACE. That's race. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Be sure to tune in for episode seven. Thank you.